Good morning everyone, welcome to morning prayer today on Thursday the 11th, no, Thursday the 12th of November, yesterday was the 11th, uh, Remembrance Day. Um, I hope you are all well and coping well in our, uh, our second lockdown. Um, we've managed to get out for a couple of walks, um, we're lucky living here where we can walk across to um, the common and uh, to the boardwalk, so um, a nice place to be living. Although we have done those walks quite a lot this year, so uh, it'd be nice to be walking elsewhere. But we're doing as we're told and staying in. So this morning um, we have morning prayer in the, the season that's known now as Kingdom Season. If we were in church we'd be wearing red, it'd be a red altar. Um, and it's that very short season between All Saints Day and Advent Sunday. And of course we have Remembrance in there as well and All Souls, so um, quite a, a busy season and a very short one. Um, so we are in Kingdom season. So if you're following our readings this morning um, and you would like to read later the psalm set for today, it is Psalm 26 uh, and also 27, so two psalms this morning. Um, if you're following the readings, we are reading Daniel 6, so that's the whole of the chapter of Daniel in the Old Testament, and um, which is quite a long reading, and the reading I will be reading this morning, set for today, is Revelation 8, so that's the eighth chapter of Revelation, and I will be reading that one. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so not reading our psalm or Daniel, we move on to our canticle before our New Testament reading and a canticle for this kingdom, for this kingdom season. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people who are informed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So our scripture reading this morning from Revelation 8. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were being given to them. Another angel with a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given a great quantity of incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar that is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder rumblings, flashings of lightning, and an earthquake. Now the seven angels who had seven trumpets made ready to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there came a hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were hurled to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain 
burning with fire, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood. The third of the waters became Wormwood, and many died from the water because it was made bitter. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light was darkened. A third of the day was kept from shining, and likewise the night. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew in mid-heaven. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth! at the blast of the other trumpets that the three angels are about to blow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And when I um, do this morning prayer, as you've probably gathered, I try not to read the reading before beforehand so that um, it's sort of just my thoughts and instant and I hope for some inspiration. But there are days, Thursdays, like today, when I wish that perhaps I had read it before talking to you. Um, but that doesn't make it spontaneous, does it? Um, wow, what a reading. What are we to make of this? Well, I, I suppose I was forewarned because Revelation um, is the book we're reading through in morning prayer at the moment. And it's, um, it's a traditional time of year to be reading Revelation. Um, that kingdom season where um, we think about the kingdom and, and God is ruler of all and we're also looking to Advent um, which is our waiting season. Um, the wonderful thing about the Anglican Church um, or the way we do things I think is the way that we do it sickly every year we follow the same pattern and we, we follow the church's year and we follow the story of God through the year. So Re Revelation, this uh, revelation, this apocalyptic writing um, is very fitting at this time of year. Um, other churches, the, um, um, the Egyptian, the Coptic church, they, they read Revelation all in one night. And they read that on Saturday, Holy Saturday, the empty Saturday before the coming of Christ on the Sunday morning, on Easter morning. And they stay up all night and, and read it in church, um, as, as do other traditions too. Uh, and we are similarly in, in that sort of situation. We're reading it over a longer period, but leading up to Advent and to the birth of Christ. Um, so what's it all about? Well, goodness, there's been so much, as I said, last week written about Revelation that is just nonsense. If you've ever watched the Left Behind series or read them, um, quite entertaining, but, but complete nonsense. What Revelation tells us um, is that God is in charge. Uh, it, 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 it's a book all of its own. It's an apocalyptic writing, much like um, Daniel and Ezekiel and uh, some other Old Testament um, books. It also has prophecy in it, like Isaiah, Amos, the prophets of the Old Testament. Um, and it draws from those, um, very much from Ezekiel. If you read Ezekiel, you find great similarities. But it's very much a, of its own writing. And so we take it in that way as an apocalyptic writing of the time, and a prophetic writing of the time. And what it's not saying is that these woes, these trumpets, the seals that are opened throughout the book, they are not God throwing those down to earth. This is a writing telling us about what we're doing to earth. It's talking about the terrible things that are going to happen to Earth because of us. So um, these, this Revelation 8 
um, and there's worse to come when you read on. Um, but Revelation 8 is very much environmental. You know, the, the seas, the rivers, the, the fields, the trees are being destroyed. Yes, we're doing that. This is what Revelation is telling us. Watch out. Be careful. Care. Don't just um, destroy the earth yourselves. God isn't going to do that. The wonderful thing about the book of Revelation is that it comes together as the only light in the world is God himself in, in Jesus Christ. That is our light. That is our hope. And our following of him and our worshipping of him, as, as the book describes, is how we keep everything together. Rather than unleashing on the world the destruction that humanity does. So that's what we're that's what Revelation is talking about. It's warning us of ourselves, not saying um, like um, some of the traditional stories and films that have made that, that God is doing this to us. God created this. He's not going to destroy it. But we are. And so that's that's our message this morning. Environmental very much on Revelation 8, wars, um, keeping the peace, talking rather than bombing, politics, all of that is in this book. All of humanity and the worst of humanity is in this book and the best of God is in it too. Let's pray. So God our Father, we pray your blessing on all people. This week as we continue our season of remembrance, we pray for all of those who seek peace in our world. We pray for all those who work uh, in charitable organisations that help others here in our own country and across the world. We pray for politicians who strive for peace and speak out against the prevailing way. We pray uh, this week particularly for the United States and their new government, their new president elect. We pray that this will move the United States into a, a new way of peace and peace negotiation around the world. We pray for our own government as we continue to uh, we continue this pandemic and finding ways to help people come through it to save our NHS to find a new vaccine that is safe and works and we pray for our government as as we come towards the end of the year and Brexit and we pray over the negotiations for this country and all the millions of us that will be affected by it. Lord in your mercy hear our prayers. We pray for your church in the world for our Christian brothers and sisters everywhere, particularly in those places where they are being persecuted or where there is war. Praying especially for our Christian brothers and sisters in Nagorno-Karabakh as a tenuous peace process is negotiated. We pray for your churches here in our communities, for all of those who attend our churches but cannot at the moment. For all of those who are affected by the work of our churches. For all of those who are joining us online who have never been to our churches. We pray your strength and your health and your wisdom and your grace on all of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we think particularly of those whom we know who are suffering at the moment, those who are unwell. Praying especially for those in hospital and for their family and friends who cannot visit them at this time. We pray for all of those ill at home and alone. For all of those isolated. We give thanks for the work of those in our communities who seek to try and keep us together and to help those in need. We think particularly at this moment for our schools still open, for the teachers and staff, for the children and their families, for those for whom going to school is a worry, for those who are not able to go to school because of ill health. And we lift to you now, Lord, all of those in our own hearts and minds in need of your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And the collect for this week. Almighty Father, whose will it is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week. Bless you all.